I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever people say. I see His hand of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer. And every time I need Him, He's always near. He lives, He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see His loving care. And though my heart goes weary, I never will despair. I know that He is leading through all the stormy blasts. The day of His appearing will come at last. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along my stairway. He lives, He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. No other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, as Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along my narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart. Yes, thank the Lord. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know my Redeemer.
praise the dear Lord. Thank the Lord. Is there another? Thank the Lord for those good songs. These aren't interested in your prayers this morning as we look into the Word of God written on the board this morning, a resurrection experience. I am very thankful to serve a risen Lord today. And I am thankful that He is in my heart, as the song says. I'd like to pick up, and we'll just start over in the 27th chapter of Matthew this morning, Kind of where we left off Wednesday night for those that were here. When Jesus hung on the cross at Golgotha, at 12 o'clock noon, the sun was darkened and the day became as night across the land and it remained dark until 3 o'clock in the afternoon when Jesus cried with a loud voice and he said, It is finished. Friday was the day of preparation. The lambs were being slain in the temple courtyard. Three o'clock was the last time, the last hour that the lambs could be slain. And it was at that hour that Jesus said, it is finished because Jesus was the lamb that was slain for us that we might be saved. When Jesus died on the cross, the hopes and the dreams of all those that had followed him Many of those dreams were dashed. People had anticipated that Jesus would deliver them. They didn't understand that it was spiritual. They thought he would deliver them from the power of the Roman government. But their hopes and their dreams were in the plan of Jesus Christ. But it appeared that that Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock, two, almost 2,000 years ago, it looked like the devil had won. It looked like finally Satan had won and silenced this man called Jesus. This man that had healed the sick. This man that had given sight to the blind. This man that had cast out devils. The, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the, the religious leaders and the rulers of the government. That's why Herod had all the children killed. They were against what Christ was about. And it appeared on that day that finally they had been successful. This man called Jesus, who professes to be the Son of God, he's dead. It's over. And so in the 27th chapter of Matthew, we read that Joseph, in the 59th verse, he had gone to Pilate and asked for the body of the Christ. And they took him off the cross and they wrapped his body in clean linen cloth. In verse 60, they laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock and rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. Then we read in verse 62, the next day, which would be the Sabbath day. That would be Saturday. It said the next day that followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate saying, Sir, we remember that deceiver said while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. You know, I almost think that they remembered better than Christ's own disciples. Because his own disciples, many of them were, well... Two of them at least, wasn't it? Those that have followed Christ, they were on the road to Emmaus. I could preach on that again this Resurrection Sunday with joy, but that's not what the Lord put on my heart. But 
Here he, they said, we remember that, that this man said he would raise on, be risen on the third day. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday would have been the third day. It was a part of each of those days. And they said, command therefore this, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say to the people, he is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. And Pilate said, you have a watch. Go your way and make it as sure as you can. And so they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. There is some debate in history as to who it was that set the watch. Was it the guards of the temple or was it the Roman guards? But notice they went to Pilate. And it was Pilate was the chief administrator of the Roman government in this land. And he said, do whatever you need, go set a watch. It's interesting to note that a Roman guard consisted of 16 soldiers. Now they might have had two, Rome, they might have had two uh, temple guards there, but because the way that it's phrased makes me think that it's a good possibility there was a Roman guard there. Do whatever you need to make it secure. If you are concerned about the body of Christ being stolen, I think I might have put more than two soldiers there. And if it was a Roman guard, there would have been 16 of them. Do whatever you need to make sure. We're going to verify that this man's body is not stolen. I am so thankful that is not the end of the story. Do you know that if this were the end of the story this morning, our preaching would be in vain? There is no reason to be out to service today. If, if that was the end of the story, we would just have a form of religion. We would have another religion and we could go through the primary religions of the world. We would just be like one of those because their leaders are dead this morning. We would just be propagating some ideology and philosophy or tradition of men in how to live life. But thank God that's not the end of the story. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began, so the end of the Sabbath, keep in mind Saturday is the Sabbath, and the Sabbath ends at sunrise. So that would be early Sunday morning. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher, and behold, and the phrasing of this, it, it makes you think that the earthquake was here, but studying the other Gospels, the earthquake was prior to the coming of the women to the tomb. There had been a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. It is noteworthy that this was an angel from heaven. In the New Testament, when the word angel is used, it means a messenger. So a minister in the book of Revelation, a minister is often referred to as an angel. They're bringing a message. A fallen angel would be a fallen messenger, see? A fallen ministry. Well, here the Apostle John was, or Matthew rather, was very clear in saying it was an angel from heaven. This was a celestial being that God sent down from the celestial heavens with a message. The, the tomb, the stone had been rolled away and an angel was sitting there and for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became his dead men. What keepers? Those soldiers that were there to make a guard to be sure that the body of Christ was not stolen. So now the angel of the Lord and the power of God is going against the power of the Roman government and the power of the religious leaders of the time. You know what reminds me of the prophecy in Daniel that said in the days of these kings... In the days of the king speaking about the Roman Empire, there would be a little stone cut out of a mountain without hands and it would grow and grow and grow until it filled the whole earth. Do you know that's what Christianity has done? 
That's what the Lord Jesus did. And so here it said those, those keepers, they became as dead men. They had no power against the power of God. And so it said, the angel said unto the women, fear not. For you, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. In these beautiful words, he is not here. For he is risen, as he said. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. Isn't that beautiful? The Lord did exactly what he said he would do. When the world was in darkness and all hope was gone, there was, God had a plan. This morning in your darkness, God has a plan for you. When it seems like that I had hopes and dreams and plans and it seems like they're dashed, this story is not over this morning. Do not give up hope where it seems impossible. Come see the place where the Lord lay. In other words, He's not dead anymore. He's risen. There's been a resurrection. You know what it means to be resurrected? It means to be raised up. Yes. To be raised up. He was dead, but now He's alive. And He's living. And you know it wasn't just a couple people that saw the living Christ? The Scripture in 1 Corinthians tells us in chapter 15... It tells us that over in 1 Corinthians, rather, it tells us that he was seen of over 500 people. This was not done in a corner that there's a couple people that were perpetuating a lie. But he rose from the dead and he was seen of over 500 people. Can you imagine having over 500 people witness in court that we saw that man? In a court of law, if over 500 people were eyewitnesses of a resurrected Lord, you would have to believe that man is not dead. We just thought he was dead. Jesus was dead. But the power of God came into that body and that corruption put on incorruption. And that mortal put on immortality. And he is still alive today. Our praying this morning is not in vain. We are not praying to a Buddha. We are not praying in the name of the prophet that is dead, of the prophet of Islam. We are praying to a living Lord this morning. And He is standing at the right hand of the throne of God and He's interceding for us. And it gives me hope and it gives me courage in times of our darkness that we can get down and seek the face of the Father. And there is a daysman. There is one that is standing between us and God and He's interceding for us. He's alive this morning. And you say, what is the joy of this day that we celebrate? I will tell you the joy I don't find it in eggs and in a bunny somewhere. I find the joy this morning that there is a risen Lord. I find that Jesus is not in the tomb anymore. Well, so what is the joy in that? Because was the joy that they found here, was it just that we don't have to offer animal sacrifice anymore? That because Jesus is alive, that we don't have to anymore bring a lamb in and sacrifice it that through that blood we can be forgiven of sin? Do you know the hope and the joy that we have this morning is that through the power of the resurrection, there is efficacy in the blood of Christ that enabled us not only to be forgiven of our sin, but that there is power, as Jesus said, to go and sin no more. It was more than saving us the inconvenience of offering animal sacrifice. There is power in the blood of Jesus to save and there's power to keep. And it is only because the Lord raised from the dead. If we have hope of Christ in this life only, the scripture says, we are of all, of all men most miserable. But we're not miserable this morning because there is power to save and there is power to keep. Because Jesus is alive this morning. Amen. Let's sing a verse, let's sing the chorus, Because He Lives. Because He Lives. This is our joy this morning. I can taste Yes, thank God. Because He lives. All fear is gone. you this morning? Does that not cause
cross something, I'll tell you, I would rather reflect on the resurrected Lord than any close game in a football game or baseball game or rodeo or whatever it else is. Do you realize this excites me this morning? Because it changes my life. It changed our life this morning because there's a resurrected Lord. There are many people this morning that are filling Christian churches across our world today. And you know that my heart goes out to them because I wonder, do they realize the value of what we're rejoicing in this morning? There is a resurrected Lord and I've written on the board, I guess it's time to move on to the message, isn't it? There is a resurrection experience that we can have this morning that is more than looking back to a book, a book, a letter that was written 2,000 years ago and we blow the dust off of it and we say, oh, that's a really exciting story. Jesus is alive this morning and because He is alive, there is a power of God that came into my life when I was in sin. When I could not help myself, the Lord came in and He forgave me and He loved me. He lifted me out of the miry clay and He set my feet on the rock and He established my goings. He put a new song in my mouth. That's exciting to me. I don't know what's going on in your life, but thank God there is a personal resurrection experience that you can have today because He lives. When we cannot help ourselves, the Lord Jesus can come in with a resurrecting power in your life and lift you up where you're down. Thank the Lord for that. This is personal now this morning. When Jesus came to Mary and Martha, and He came and He had, remember Lazarus was dead, and they thought, Lord, you're too late. Our brother's dead. Jesus looked on them and He said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. There is an experience that you also can have a resurrection. We sang the song already this morning, a resurrection, I confess, has taken place within my breast. I've been awakened from the dead and now I live with Christ instead. Have you experienced that? Or, you know, this is a lot more now than coming to church on Resurrection Sunday. I mean, I'm glad you're all here. But there is something that can change your life tomorrow. There is something that will put a spring back in your step next week. When things go wrong and you're hopeless, there is a light of the love of God that will give you hope that I have something to look forward to. Thank the Lord, we can have a resurrection experience. And I would this morning that each one of us examine our own life. And I think it's a fair question for us to ask ourselves, have I had a personal resurrection experience? Or am I dead? Am I still living in sin? Well, Jesus rose from the dead and it gave power to that blood that can lift us up. And it's a lot more this morning than coming to service. It's a lot more than being a faithful giver. It's a lot more than being a faithful prayer and praying. Say, well, I pray. It's a lot more than saying, I believe in God. It's a lot more than saying, well, I don't do a lot of the bad things that the world's doing. That's not a resurrection this morning. A resurrection experience is an instantaneous divine work of God where He comes in and forgives you and enables you to go and live a life pleasing to the Lord. And if you're not living where you give Him your heart, it's more than a sorry experience. You know what a sorry experience is? That's a, I told Renee that's a title for another message. A sorry experience. It's people that live in I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did that and I'll, I'll do it again tomorrow, but I'm sorry today. And it never changes. I'm sorry I treated you that way. I'm sorry I committed that sin. Lord, I'm sorry I went out and got drunk. And Lord, I'm sorry for this. That's a, that's a miserable way to live. There is an experience in the Lord this morning that not only are we forgiven of our sin, because we need to be sorry, but we need to repent. That means to turn away from our sin. 
But there is a work that God wants to do. The prophet Ezekiel said, speaking of Christ and what God would do, he said, I will give you a new heart. He said, I will give you a new spirit. Do you know that's what the Lord does for us this morning? He takes out the sin. He forgives us and He gives us a new motivation, a new purpose. He puts that new song in our heart. What, what song are you singing this morning? What, what song are, are you singing? Well, there's lots of songs we could talk about in there. What's your song? Can you say that I've experienced a resurrection? I know the world and I know so maybe some of you are just tired of religion. Maybe some of you this morning are just tired of churches. You know what? I get tired of that too because, you know, church doesn't change anything inside. I'll tell you what changes something though. When we open up our heart to a resurrected Lord, there is a power that He can come in and change me. And thank God He did it. And you know what? That gives me hope for tomorrow. People look on and say, you're not like you used to be. Have you ever heard that? Someone gets saved. You know when someone gets saved, they have a resurrection experience. They were dead in sin. But the Lord came in and He made them a new creature. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. It says all things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. That's the joy of the resurrection. People say, well, they're not like they used to be. What happened? You know what happened? Just like the prodigal son that was out in sin and he came back home. Remember the father said, this my son was dead and now he's alive. God gave him a resurrection experience. I'm not the same person I used to be. I wonder this morning, have you experienced that personal resurrection? Have you had experienced that touch from the Lord when he came in and he did something divine? It was more than saying, I'm sorry. It was He came in and He took what was broken. He took the sin. He took the things I couldn't change and I wanted to do better and I couldn't do it. And the Lord Jesus came in and He raised me up by His divine power. Not the man I used to be. Not the child I used to be. I'm not the young person I used to be. I'm not the dad. I'm not the mom that I used to be. Why? Because I had a resurrection experience. And I opened up my heart and the Lord came in and did something divine. You know, that's the rejoicing today. It's not just an event a long time ago that we celebrate. It's what the Lord is still doing in our hearts and in our lives today. So shall we then continue in sin? Jesus died, shed his blood, rose from the grave. So shall we continue in sin? What did you say? God forbid, you can read, it's homework if you want homework. You can go read the sixth chapter of Romans. But God forbid that we should live in sin anymore. Because as Christ was died on the cross and was resurrected, so we have been buried with Him in baptism. And we've been raised to newness of life. Talking about a spiritual resurrection. That's the symbolism of water baptism. We are not saved by water baptism. Put a sinner in the water and you can dip them 50 times if you want and they're still going to come up a sinner. But when they open up their heart to the Lord and they're resurrected spiritually, that water baptism is just an outward testimony of this is what the Lord already did in my life. I'm interested this morning in a spiritual resurrection experience. I'll tell you, if you don't have that kind of experience trying to live a holy life, I told the young folks this morning, it's flat out miserable. Because it's not in here. I'm just trying to fit in with a group or trying to fit, it's, it's what my church does. That's not good enough this morning. We need something personal with God and it will make it real to you. Because I live this way now because I was dead. I was blind but now I see, and I don't know how it all happened, but I know it did. It was because Jesus rose from the dead. What's your experience this morning? Do you know this morning that is one of the, and I think it's a great blessing for those that have been raised hearing truth. You have been blessed above many. But I will say here is the danger with that. 
You grow up hearing this truth. You grow up hearing this doctrine and, you know, you kind of fit in and you kind of do certain things and you develop a lifestyle like you've been taught. In some things, maybe you don't. But there is a need for each and every one of us. As Nicodemus came to Jesus, he wanted to know, what do I need to do? To inherit the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except you come to a place and say, Lord, I need a resurrection experience. You know that there's a place of growth in our life. But when we are saved, that is, the resurrection of Christ was instantaneous. All right? It was not a process of days and weeks and months and, and the finger became alive and then the... The power of God came in him. Jesus was dead and now he is alive. Is not that what happened with Paul on the road to Damascus? He was in sin. He was dead. But when he saw Jesus, he also had a resurrection experience. That's what the Lord wants to give to each one of us this morning. A resurrected life is a radical transformation and a radical change. Have you experienced that? And I'm not asking you to answer me, but in your own heart and mind this morning, is it fair on this Sunday that we celebrate the resurrection of Christ to ask, have I had that resurrection experience in my life? Have I had that real change? Or is it always I'm just trying to be better and I want to be a better Christian? There are people striving to be better Christians that have never had a resurrection experience. A place that we just come and acknowledge, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need a new heart. And I know I've been doing good, some good things, Lord, but I need you to come in and transform my life. I believe the Lord would be delighted to bring down some of that resurrection power here this morning. Make a change to give a new heart a new mind. This is the reason Paul said in the book of Galatians in the second chapter in the 20th verse, he said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Against all odds on that weekend so long ago, life conquered death. Satan lost the battle. Where sin did abound, now doth grace much more abound. And he came to make a difference in our lives today. There is a song, and I won't attempt to sing it, but it says, thanks to Calvary. Thanks to Calvary, I'm not the man I used to be. Thanks to Calvary, things are different than before. While the tears ran down my face, I tried to tell them, thanks to Calvary, I, I don't go there anymore. This was a man talking to his old friends. Where have you been? I don't go there anymore, thanks to Calvary, and thanks to the power of the resurrection. Today, the song says, I went back and to the house and where I used to live, and my little boy, he ran in fear behind the door. Uh-oh, dad's home. What, what mood's he in? Said, But I said, son, you don't need to fear because you've got a new daddy now. Thanks to Calvary, we don't live here anymore. Have you experienced that change this morning? You children and young people, it's good for you to try to be good and obey your parents and try to do the right things and be sorry when you haven't done what's right. But this morning... There is a need to have a resurrection experience. Yes. To the older ones here this morning, I know that you had some life behind you. I know you've seen some things. I know probably all of us have been disappointed in some things. And we've been discouraged by some things. And the enemy is there to capitalize on that. But this morning, this resurrection experience, it's real. It's real. And it goes beyond trying. It is something the Lord wants to do for us in our life. For my son was dead. And he's alive. 
He was lost and he's found. And it is this that gives us hope and takes away fear for when Jesus comes back. Because that curse of death and eternal punishment that is going to be for all sinners, when we have had a resurrection experience, we need not fear the judgment of God because we're no longer dead, but we are living and following Christ Jesus. As we stand this morning, I just want to give a special invitation. If there is anyone here that would like to yield your heart to the Lord, if there's anyone here this morning that would like to have that change, Lord, I've tried and I'm not happy and I don't know what I need, this is what you need this morning. A resurrection experience. The Lord will meet you here if you will come and open up your heart to the Lord. Let's stand and have a song.